everybody, welcome back to Flights of Fancy. I'm Sarah and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be doing a flower crown for Beltane, even though it's quite a bit late. I've just been seeing all the fresh flowers and all the greenery and the trees blooming and this beautiful canopies of greenness. So I can't help myself, I have just got to make a flower crown. Uh, here I have uh, several assortments of plants from my garden plus some flowers from Trader Joe's because unfortunately I don't really have much in the way of flowers in my yard. I'll be making three flower crowns today, sort of a manly fern one with berries a, and two floral ones. It's going to be so much fun. I'm really excited. I just love doing this every year. So enjoy! Thank you, snowberry bush. Thank you, sword fern. Thank you, huckleberry. Here are the dahlias, only just a little bit open. And a bouquet of random flowers that are just so beautiful. And from my own garden, I have red huckleberries, ferns, oh, and some mint, because herbs are always nice. Uh, sword fern snowberry greenery, and of course, ivy. All right, let's get down to it. With the sword ferns, or with a lot of the greenery, I basically braid it. Um, I have one facing backwards so that when I get to the end of my braid, I can bring it or twist it around into a loop like I'm doing here. Make sure to measure it on whoever's head it's for. Everybody's he head has a different size and it's really annoying if your flower crown is too big and falls down over your face or is too small and just perches on the top of your head. They're pretty hard to resize once you've kind of gotten them all in place. So my method, uh, this method, is to braid a long strand, longer than would go around, you know, like one that uh, go around your head like two, maybe three times. And when you get to the end, just start weaving it over, you know, around itself into a circle. Um, you can kind of see what I did with this one and with the future ones. Kind of secure the end in amongst the braid. In this case, I'm attaching some more ferns around the outside. They're kind of just like poked in and then tacked at the ends, just kind of poke the ends of the ferns in amongst the other ferns to keep them in place. Uh, I, I did not secure these huckleberries well enough. I was just kind of winging it. Um, they're staying on pretty good here at first, but I put them on the ground and my dog walked over it and all the huckleberries fell off. <laughs> uh, if you're making these actually for Beltane, you would not have the same plants that I am using here. The huckleberries obviously wouldn't be ripe yet and so forth. So it really depends on what is ripe or in season during that time of year region and everything. You can kind of see here with the snowberries, the stems were a little stiff, so it was kind of hard to tuck them in and bring them around, but you just kind of have to do it, you want to do it loosely anyways, because you need space between the stems to poke the flowers later. But I used the same technique, I braided it, and then wove it around itself into a, like a, it's a wreath basically, I suppose. I think I kind of forgot you're supposed to work from the bigger flowers down to the little flowers <laughs> in this one, so I I put in the little flowers first and just had to work with it, what I had. You want to pick flowers that have a semi-bendable stem and one that's not going to snap or be too squishy, like tulips are usually ripe around May 1st, but they're so delicate, like when the stems just squish and you can't, they are not stiff enough to poke between stems. You could, it could probably still make them work. You might be able to just braid 
tulip stems together. I haven't tried it. Uh, daffodils and ones like that would be the same. If all these flowers had nice sturdy stems, almost too sturdy, I had to bend them a little bit to make them pliable enough. But it's really, really it's so much fun to just arrange these flowers. I, I tend to go overboard. Uh, another one of my favorite flowers to work with is lilac. Lilacs usually ripe around May 1st. And uh, it's a little tricky because it's just so poofy, but I like it poofy. It's like those old um, Yoshitaka. No, not Yoshitaka. <laughs> one of my other favorite artists. Um, the Art Nouveau. Art Nouveau. It's the Art Nouveau artist. Am I saying that right? Anyways. Famous for those ladies with flower crowns. Always very large and fluffy. That's gonna bother me and I can't remember his name. Oh, I just looked it up. It's Alphonse Mucha. One of my very favorite artists. That's where I get a lot of my flower crown inspiration. Alright, here, we're moving on to ivy. Ivy has been, is so easy, you could just get it in these huge long strands, and it's an invasive plant, so nobody cares if you tear it out of their garden. And uh, it's a little, there's like all these long stemmy leaves, but they're also bendable and nice. And so instead of braiding it, I just took a piece and I just wrapped it around itself in a circle. You just wrap and wrap and wrap and wrap, and eventually all of the leaves and stems will be not sticking out. You'll have to go back, like you'll see how I go back and tuck a few in at the end. It's kind of, it's cute and funny, you know, it's charming to have ivy leaves dripping down in your hair. <laughs> like, feel like a flower hippie. Yeah, I ended up only using two strands of ivy that were probably two or three feet long. And that's really all I needed. It, with all the stems and leaves, it came out uh, really chunky. Uh, I had a bit of snowberry branch left over, so I just stuck that in there. You could see Tomo in the background, my dog. He is just begging for me to throw the ball. Okay, here, now I'm starting with the big flowers and moving on to the little flowers like you're supposed to. Poor Tom. He can't get enough of the ball. At first I was going to leave the leaves on these flowers, but they just stuck out funny, so I pulled them off. Moving on to some smaller flowers, kind of running out of flowers. Ended up having plenty. My friends put on these Beltane events and I'm always so excited. I go and I coordinate the flower crown making, basically tell everybody what kind of plants to bring and I make a bunch of like leafy bases and then all the other people can just use one of those bases and poke their own flowers in. It usually works out pretty well. It's kind of hard to make sure 30 people have a flower crown. <laughs> there we go, much better. And voila, here they are. And modeled them, so pretty. A little bit of leaves sticking out, oh hi kitty.